What if I told you there was a way of working on Premiere Pro projects on different computers without having any relinking errors? Got your attention, didn't I? Internet, what's going on? Robert T. Garden back again with another video. Today we're doing a T. Garden quick tip tutorial. Before I get started, I'd like to ask if you haven't already, go ahead and click subscribe. I post content on filmmaking tips and the business of being a creative every week. If that's something that interests you, I'd like to see you around the community a little bit more often. Go ahead and you know do the things that you're supposed to do. If you are collaborating with anyone else outside of who lives in your home and works on your computer, you've invariably experienced the scenario in which you send someone a project file and there are files that are unlinked when they start to open it. No! What I try to do all the time is maintain a very cohesive file directory on the external hard drives I work on. However, sometimes I have projects and things that contain files that live on my internal hard drive, whether that's sound effects or you know different types of VFX things, templates, those sorts of things. They don't always make it onto the external hard drive. So when I send those files over to people I'm collaborating with, they get link errors and it's a big giant pain in the ass. Today, I was working on a project with my colleague, Joseph Manterroso, and he told me that you can actually export that sequence via the project manager window and it will consolidate a file that contains all of the media that is used in that particular sequence that you can send over the internet so that there are no relinking issues. Blew my mind. This is such an awesome hack. I wanted to make a quick video to show you guys exactly how I did that. With that being said, let's jump into the computer and I'll show you exactly how it's done. So here I am in Premiere Pro and this is a fairly simple process. The first thing I want to do is go up to file and go down to project manager all the way at the bottom of that window. What's going to do is pop open this dialog box that gives you selected sequences that are in your project that you're working on. Now this one actually was a quick little hit that I made, uh, didn't even end up renaming the sequence. So this DJI file number is the sequence name itself. And then you'll see two different results that you can have. The first one, which is what we're interested in, is to collect the files and copy them to a new location. The other one is you can consolidate and transcode files themselves, but that's not what this video is about. We're just gonna focus on the first one at the top of this list. And the next thing we're going to do is select a destination where these files are going to go. If I go down here and, and select the path, I can browse through where I want this particular file to be. Now, this is actually the location I want this to end up, so I'm going to leave it there. The next thing I can see is based off that directory, I have this much available disk space. I can calculate how large this export is going to be. Fairly small one at only 118 megabytes. And so we're looking good there. I've got definitely enough storage to be able to handle something like that. A couple different options over here that you can choose. Uh, convert After Effects compositions to clips. I don't have any of those in there. However, if I ever export to After Effects or replace particular sequence with an After Effects composition, that would be very helpful to maintain uh, that project within Premiere rather than having to go into After Effects itself. And so once I have have all of these things locked and loaded, I can hit OK and it's going to start to analyze the project. Now, the thing that takes the most amount of time is this copying media phase. Um, however, with the power of editing, I'm going to show you guys exactly what happened once that is done. So now that that copying process has finished, we can go through and navigate to where I said I wanted those files to go. Right here is what we're going to see this copied file of what we're looking at. Now, what's awesome is that these files themselves right here were all things that lived on my internal hard drive that were not on the original export, the files that I sent over to Joe on the hard drive itself. And so now I'm able to export these particular files and just send him the ones that he's missing along with the project file via Dropbox, Google Drive, or whatever the protocol that you guys use. So now that that's done, I can go ahead and rename this file if I wanted to, or just send it the way that it is, copy this over to a Dropbox window, which is the protocol that we use, uh, or send it via WeTransfer, like I said, whatever you wanted to do. And now what my colleagues have are all of the files consolidated in one space. I don't have to go searching through my internal hard drive or look at my downloads to see where the unlinked files are. I can just send them one folder where everything lives. It's super easy and consolidated. If it becomes too large, 
of course you can compress it and zip it. If it becomes even larger than that, then you would use a Wii transfer type of protocol. But this is a way to quickly and efficiently gather all of the files used in a particular sequence, send them over to people that you're collaborating with, and uh, makes everyone's life a lot easier. With that in mind, I would like to say, if you like the video, like the damn video. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Thanks again to my friend Joseph Mantarroso for the amazing tip. If you think this one would be useful to somebody else, go ahead and share it. And uh, with that in mind, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.